Okay, this is, I'm gonna show you some of the items I've, I've learned using Word for doing um, extra edits after Family Book Creator creates the book. Uh, I mean, as many options as Family Book Creator does have, there's always something that you wish could be done a little bit different. Uh, and this is, uh, so I'll show you some of the techniques or things I've learned while doing the book. Uh, I'm far from an expert on Word, uh, but you know, there's lots of big books you can get on Word for all the intricacies of uh, all the hidden field codes. Uh, I'm gonna start by sharing my screen here. <clears throat> I'm going to show an example of where I, uh, I I'm doing a combined book from my uh, great grandparents, Clarence Benjamin Hall and Gladys uh, Laura Bloomfield, <clears throat> and I'm I'm doing a combined book like the ancestors of and descendants of them all in one combined book. Uh, and initially, for the, I did two separate ancestors, one for Clarence's and one for Gladys's. Uh, and it's like I could have just started with, say, like my grandma and said, OK, to all, all of her ancestors. But then as you get into some of the later generations, it start you get start getting the uh, paternal and maternal lines combined together. Uh, in this way, it's just a little bit more straightforward. Uh, so I do the ancestors of Clarence, the ancestors of Gladys, and then all their descendants. Uh, well, let's just start by looking at one of the documents uh, that it created in Word. Uh, here it asks if you want to update the files. There, you can if you want if to update the fields. You don't have to. As a matter of fact, I actually say don't do it because. Uh, you gotta do it later anyway. But here's like the descendants, here's the colophone, dedication, here's the forward uh, introduction. Now this contents page, this is actually the table of contents and you'll notice that there really isn't a table of contents. And that's because this is all a generated field. Uh, so that way when you combine items, as long as the hidden codes are there, to populate the table of contents, you don't have to modify anything. Um, introduction, here's the person. Uh, it, it always lists their descendants. Uh, and then likewise, scroll down here, here's the index of places and in individuals. Again, these are all calculated fields. So you don't have to uh, do anything with them. Uh, now I'm going to just uh, select the whole document and then press F9. Some computers you might have to do function F9. That will update everything. And like I said, you don't normally don't have to do it, but then you know, so boom, here are the place names. There's the person index, and then up above here. Here's the table of contents. And now one thing I don't like is like I, uh, it always says family of his descendants. Well, you know, it's not just Clarence, you know, he didn't have the child himself. Gladys was in there. So I like to say, well, their uh, families of their descendants. Now I can edit this, but then if I ever update the field, it's gonna uh, get changed. Uh, so, uh, so this uh, kind of backwards P function, this is, uh, hang on here. This will, uh, hang on one second here. No, they must have signed off. Yeah, film was echoing. 
Uh, this backwards kind of fa fancy P, this is what turns on the hidden codes. Uh, so we get down here. So here's, uh, uh, so here's the text, how it says family, the starting person. And then in these brackets here is TC, that stands for table of contents, family of starting person. So if you don't want to say family of starting person, you could just say, you know, maybe uh, family of Clarence and Gladys, or yeah. And like I said, these don't have to match. Like I said, the if we turn off that uh, <clears throat> pin codes, you know that that anything in those brackets disappears. But now if we update the fields and update the entire table. And now we can just see up here, it changed this to family of Clarence and Gat Gladys. So it, uh, um, you can do that. And then if you look at, uh, these various field codes, you know, like here, you know, here's my grandmother, Dorothy, you know, there's not much there. You turn on the hidden field codes. And let me just zoom in here. You know, cause here it's doing uh, the index for the name. Cause that's how it will display in the name. Uh, <clears throat> Decora, so here it is, it's putting in the field codes for what will be in the uh, the place name uh, index, you know, and on down. So uh, now, like for combining uh, these books, let me uh, go back here. Let me just bring up like the ancestors book. Yep, and again, no. You'll see that basically uh, the starting person is is always it's not on the same of all ones. Uh, it's on it's on all the all three of these reports because I always start from them, and it always says, "Okay, here are their kids." Well, you don't want this repeated in the combined book, so I will take. Uh, This will go a little quicker if I go to the end. Yeah, so the I just basically want to do families of the ancestors. Oops. I'll select the top and delete it. And likewise, uh, I don't need two indexes, so I can delete these indexes. Now, you might be tempted to say, uh, well, these ancestors, I don't want. Um, I, you can generate the book without the indexes, but if you tell that, then it won't add all these field codes for the name index and the place index. So you still need to generate it and then just delete it. So for this document then here, so I'm gonna just copy it and then pop, pop it in. Uh, well, it always starts with their descendants, let me so, okay, so I'm gonna, insert the ancestors right before here. So it starts with their initial kids and then it goes into uh, family of his descendants and then rather than just his, I wanna just put in Clarence's and then likewise, I gotta change this text here. And then uh, oops. 
if I scroll too far. Yeah, this is. Okay, here's where I did it. So now I, I'll go to the ancestors of Gladys. And likewise, I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to delete this first part. And then get to the end, get rid of the place name and and these are just placeholders, but I don't need I don't need two name indexes, don't need two place indexes. So I can select that document, go back to this descendants, and I'll insert them there. And actually, I think I inserted it in the wrong spot. Yeah, that's families of Oh, this is their descendants. Yeah, never mind. I wanted their here. Anyway, so I've got them all merged in. So now if I just um, select the entire thing, that's Control A, hit F9, update the entire table. Now, if we look at the table of contents here, okay, there's the family Charles uh, Clarence and Gladys. There's family of his ancestors. Oh. Okay, I, I copied this wrong, but. Um, Family of his ancestors, family of, okay. Oh, yeah, duh, never mind, hang on. I forgot to copy that in. Yeah, here's where I want, yeah, I forgot to. I thought I inserted hers in the wrong spot, so I undid it, but it was right after all. Sorry about that. Let's update this again. Okay, so here, so here's the title. So, okay, it's the family of Clarence and Gladys, then the family of his ancestors, followed by family of his ancestors, and then family of their descendants. Uh, and like now, likewise, with the family of his ancestors, if I want to um, change that text, let me just. You can just change the hidden codes. This is how it will print in the book. The, what's in the uh, and again, this table of contents. This is what actually changes the word in the table of contents. And the first generation. So now let's just do a search for her ancestors. And so now here I can make that say Gladys's. And so now if I update these fields. <clears throat> And normally you don't have to update these fields all the time. Usually it's like go in, make the edits, 
and then uh, you'll see. And this is a relatively short book. I only did this for a couple of generations in each one, so it doesn't take that long. If I did this full, full book, it would take about five, 10 minutes to update, so. Um, but yeah, so here, you know, family Gladys's, family Clarence's, so so it updated that those fields. Uh, one other thing, like some people don't uh, like uh, where there'll be blank pages, and it is an industry standard that when you start a new section, it will always start on an odd page. And you can even see here, it says section break odd page. So it doesn't matter what page this is on. Uh, like I said, well, right now this is page seven. So the next it's saying, okay, go to the next page will be a next odd page. Well, here it goes seven. Well, then this is now page nine. There technically is no page eight. And if you print it, it would be a blank page. Uh, and like I said, this is standard for in books. That new sections do start on eight on an uh, blank page, but if you really don't want it, uh, and you want to keep those mirror margins, where if you're going to have it professionally printed, you need that gutter margin, where it keeps the inside margin, uh, the inside margin over here, because this is not page, greater than the outside margin here. But if you do want to, you can select it all. You can change all those section breaks into new, next page. Uh, this is on layout and page, you go layout, then page setup. You click this little icon here. You can go to layout and then section start. You can always say they're all new page. And so all that goes. And so now we've got um, all these section breaks are now next page. So it's five, six, you know, it's, so it doesn't matter which, uh, that's one way you can do it. And likewise, then when you update, it'll automatically update all the page numbers. Um, <clears throat> the other thing now is, uh, on these headers, um, so, uh, sometimes, and it depends upon how you copy it, and I'm not sure, sometimes it, it does start where it doesn't link the headers together. Uh, other times it doesn't, and I'm not exactly sure how I do it differently sometimes where uh, the headers transfer and then they don't. Um, they link. Well, like in this one, this isn't just a descendants book. So I want this to be an ancestors and descendants. And see up here, it says link to previous. If I wanted to use the previous one, somehow this gets linked where, where you don't want to. Um, so that's where you change it is when you uh, click on it, you it would say like unlink from previous. Then now go down, that's the introduction. Okay, now the family of the uh, descendants. So this could actually be, well, this could be, well, this is the descendants right here. So that's fine, because these are their kids. <clears throat> But now, okay, now the family of Clarence's ancestors. Okay, yeah, it says ancestors of Clarence. Like I said, sometimes if it, if it, if the thing gets linked to the previous, it will take the previous heading. And that's where you need to unlink them. And then it goes down to the second generation. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and this is, yeah, so now here we're in 
and I guess I went too far. This is where we're in the ancestors of Gladys, my great grandmother. Scroll, scroll, scroll. I guess I really went past it. No. And then now we scroll down. So here are the kids. Yeah, see, and now it goes back to the descendants of, which is actually fine because that is the descendants of Lawrence and Benjamin because these are their kids and families. But now down here on the index of places, oh, I guess we don't need this section break right there. You know, I'd want to go back here and make this the ancestors and descendants. Again, so all that index of places, yep. And then I'll have to make sure that the index names. Yeah. We put that as well. And I mean that that's optional, but it's it's an, uh, that's um, <clears throat> just things to do and then oh get rid of yeah. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, copying and you get these odd section breaks. So, but uh, that's fine. Yeah, we want that section break. Yeah. Yeah and delete that. Now, something you may want to do uh, is maybe add in, say, like an appendix. And that's something Family Book Creator can't do. Uh, so let's see, I've got a, I've got just a generic uh, document here. And I want, let's just say, I don't want me to close these. I don't need these anymore. You know, on the, this could be family maps and let's just say, this could be, you know, fam, maybe family homestead maps or, you know, what whatever you want. But say I want that before the index name, so I'll just paste it. Um, we can insert a section break. Uh, that was just there, yeah. No, that's fine. We can do that. And then let's just say, okay, we want this will be an appendix. And then this will be, uh, you know, we can bold it and maybe center that. This I don't want centered. Um, and then this will maybe be, you know, 
Article one. And we'll just make this one say Article two. And that shouldn't have to. Shall be. Now, if I just update, I haven't added in any of the field codes for it. So usually what I'll just do is I will just go up to a heading here. Um, now where's the start? You know, so I'll, I'll just maybe just say copy this because this has got the table of contents and then the indented one. So I'll just copy that and then I'll just change the wording later. Um, yeah, so appendix, I'll just do this. Okay, so I'll make this. Actually, I'll just do this like this. This is the appendix. Change this coding. So this is appendix. And then I'll just do like this um, Article 1, Article 1. And I can just get rid of that. Then I'll copy this. Actually, that should be Article 1. Down here, I uh, will just paste in copy. Make that article two, article two. No, that's fine if it moved it to another page. And like I said, you can make this, arrange this however you want. The big thing is, is adding in these field codes. Now when I uh, update these things again, so to update the entire table. It redoes everything. And so now when I do bring up this table of contents, down here, yep, here's the appendix, art, article one and article two, and then followed by the index of places and then index of individuals. So that's how you can create your own table of contents entries. So um, are there any questions about this? Remember, you are muted if um, you want to. So unmute yourself if you need asking questions. I mean, the big thing is just uh, to create the entries, you have to use these field codes. And like I said, you can just take a look at how Family Book Creator are already creates them, and then you can just manipulate them for how you want so but everything in the brackets you know table of contents this is the text of how it will be in the table of contents this is how it will be for where it is right here you know if we turn it off you know these are usually the same but they don't have to be so but uh, I know some people, they don't turn on the codes and it's like, well, I don't want that to be called introduction. I just want it you know, to say intro or something. Well, they update the codes and it says, well, it still says introduction. And that's because they didn't change it here as well. So. Any questions? Mm. 
or if you uh or just any questions about family book creator in general is um if you're new to uh this uh this will be on uh youtube and under the family book creator group if you go under uh featured posts here uh and this last one's here is uh it has the link to the youtube videos um and it's you know so here's the ones uh i did yesterday so and yeah and stefan did point out to uh view the technical details in the user guide which if you haven't downloaded that you really should and that likewise um Back in the uh, featured post, here's the link to the latest Mac and the uh, Windows version. They they all got the same link to the download area. So you select your family book creator group. You know, here's the Windows and the Mac. Uh, just click the download and then here's the user guides that you can download. And I highly recommend downloading this. Uh, it's 111 pages, I believe. Uh, but if nothing else, go down to their appendix. Oh, well, first, when you uh, do download it, uh, they actually do have a link here to the YouTube channel, uh, to the user group and the YouTube channel. But the big thing is, is uh, down to the appendix. If nothing else, print out these two pages because it does all the custom media categories. It gives a brief description of what they are and then the page and the manual they cover. John? Yeah? As you're going through that, uh, I just, uh, that last page you were showing, if I want to print a PDF as part of my document, which what, what, is, is there one of these uh, FBC things that say handle it as a handle yeah, PDF yeah, as so a with, document? The P, with a PDF, you've got two options. Okay. You have this media category. You, you can either use FBC handle story as image, or you can use FBC handle story as text. Okay. Uh, with text, it will just take it as it is and use the formatting. Uh, if you use handle story as image, it will treat it as an image, in which case then it will by default be like at about a 48% uh, uh, width, in which case you can use, uh, you can know you may make it full width or, you know, this one only lists 30%, but if you go to the page 53, you can actually use any value from 10% up to 100%. You know, you could use 50 percent, 75, 80, you know. Uh, right. If I if I handle it as text, does it then become like a word file that I can go in and actually edit that text? Uh, yeah, if it is a text, if it is a text PDF. Yeah. Uh, then you should. I mean, really, if you if you want to edit it, I'd edit it beforehand. If you've got word. Typically, you can edit PDF files with Word. Oh, you can. So you'd open it. You'd open it in Word. Yeah, because it, if it's something edit. you're always going to want to edit, I'd say do as many edits as possible first. Uh, because yeah, really, really, these changes you do after the fact, you kind of want to keep them to a minimum. Yeah. Because if you ever regenerate the book. Um, you're going to have to make those edits all over again. Right. So if I get, like, I received the document from somebody as a PDF and it's two pages of text. Yeah. So I should be able to take that document and open it in Word 
and convert it from a PDF to a Word file? Is that the idea? And then yeah, yeah, I would do that first, okay. and you know, and edit it there the way you want it, and then save it as a Word file, and then and then cut it in, cut it into the, my document. Right, right. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, someone asked about putting a map in the index. How would you do this in Word? Uh, and actually, actually in Word, you know, it's uh, if the map is like a is a JPEG, you just do it like you insert any image. Um, let me get down here to this appendix, or like I said, or you can just do create create what you want as a Word document. Um, I guess I overshot it. Um, so say if I want to, I, I just go insert, you know, picture from this device and then um, I'm just trying to think where I've got. You know, here, so if I want to just insert this, well, this is an obituary, but you can just insert the picture, then, you know, you can size it how you want. You select kerning if you want the text to wrap around it and, you know, you know, so yeah, I mean, that's just in Word, you know, you insert a picture and, um, uh, so that's how you do that. So, I mean, this is this is an obituary. It's not a uh, map, but like I said, uh, but that's how you do it. So you just insert an image in Word. So, um, any other questions? Um, oh, Kenneth asked, yeah, if it's recordings can be available. Yes, it is. Uh, I had mentioned on the Family Book Creator site, uh, if you go to the featured posts area, there's actually a link here to the YouTube videos, and this is where they'll all be found. Uh, Steve had asked, where do I find the wraparound icon? Well, when you uh, when you insert a document here, it, it's it you select the dot the image. This comes right right up here and it gives you layout options for how you want the text to wrap around or not at all. If you only want it top and bottom. Oops. So that that icon should show up right there. So and likewise, you can go to layout and uh, but that's where that is. So any more questions or just anything in general? want to thank you very much for the information. It's uh, it's one of those things that you really have to play with it a bit before you know whether you have more questions or not, I think. Yeah, and like and like I said, on that uh, YouTube channel, there are there are more specific video. This is like a more detailed one for you no know, concentrating on, but uh, uh, I mean, here's just some general Q and A sessions. Uh, but you know, here you know you might want to look at one of these like beginner classes. They because they cover kind of some of the rookie things. They they don't cover doing stuff in Word, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and these first ones don't even really touch on media. As a matter of fact, if you're just starting out, I say don't even worry about the media. Uh, just make sure your fact sentences are correct first. Uh, you know, I guess it to print out the way you want it and then go and add the media. Cause like the last books I did, you know, it's like, it took me and my cousin, I mean, literally about two, three months and we were just tweaking the media for which, which pictures do we want displayed? Which ones don't we want displayed? Uh, you know, this one I want bigger, this one smaller, you know, maybe this one I don't want with this person, I want it more over there because this person's got lots of media. Right. Um, so, I mean, it was just a lot of fiddly putzing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's also why you don't want to, uh, you know, do as much editing and family tree maker as you can. Uh, because in that way you don't have to keep doing those uh things like one one change i had to make was um um this one cousin well it was her son no actually it's a grandson he he was dating a lady they had a child they never married well later on he married another woman and had couple more kids well family book creator says well it's that he had two relationships first relationship was gave the detail second relationship was do this and cousin she just really really hated that and she said so I changed this like so rather than two relationships it had one relationship and one marriage and then the first relationship you know details and I just said and then the marriage was, and then gave that details. So that was just that was just manually tweaking the text, and that even didn't involve any of the hidden codes. And um, but uh, you know, we did add in like an appendix and stuff like that, so that we had to add in the codes and uh, you know, and just tweak some of the way that the things did, because you know, rather than his ancestors, I said, okay, Clarence's ancestors, rather than her ancestors, like Gladys's. And then uh, it defaults to saying, well, his descendants, well, they're both there. So I said their descendants. So, uh, but like I said, the, the more you can edit in Family Tree Maker using options in Family Book Creator, the better off you are because, uh, I mean, one book, it's like, I, I generate it about every six months. It's a very active branch of my family. And I get tons of updates. It's like my grandma was one of 11 kids. And so there's like over 600 living descendants from them. Uh, so it's like, yeah, that book I update like every six months and then I just produce it on PDF and and I, and then I will actually have a printed book uh, when our next reunion will be. So, but I, I, it's like, I'm always updating that book more than any other book I work on. So, uh, and it's like, I don't want to have to keep making these same edits over and over and over. So, uh, word is kind of like your last ditch thing because, you know, it's where, where you make changes with that, you know, you just can't do in Family Tree Maker or using the options in Family Book Creator. So, yeah, uh, that, that's good advice. I'm sure what I've been doing, because I haven't been working with it very long, but what I've been doing is it's very simple to create one. And then I into Word, and then I see where I should go back and make my edits in Family Tree Maker. And then my final, you know, my final result will be with, with Word, but I'm using it as a in that way. Yeah, yeah, and you'll you'll state, you know, there there may be some things that uh, you may wind up doing differently in Family Tree Maker and. Well, like one, I had a cause of death back. Well, usually I'd capitalize, you know, okay, if 
they died of like a heart attack or cancer, you know, I'd usually capitalize it. Well, when it creates the book, it says, well, the cause of death was, and then if you're putting cancer with a capital C, it'll do that. So, well, I went back and said, okay, make sure it's all lowercase, you know, stuff like that. And then as I do stuff, it's, uh, um, you know, it's like in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, how will this print? How will this print? Uh, and so you want to be consistent the way, okay, here's how I enter birth information. Here's how I want to enter death information, burial information, you know. Uh, because how it prints the birth back for one person, it's going to print the same for everyone. I mean, there are some differences where it could have the spouse do a little bit different and then the children, but... Um, but for the most part, you know, you have them print all the same way. And, and I found out one, one thing, it's like I got some, <laughs> a cousin of mine to do a DNA test because in the book, I, uh, uh, I used her and companion to create these DNA matrix packs. And, and I decided to put in, I don't put the actual specific DNA information, but if they got a DNA kit pack, I just have a print, uh, they did a DNA test, like he or she did a DNA test. Uh, and then so a cousin of mine was reading all this and says, well, what's this where they did DNA tests? And it's like, well, yeah, they, they did. And said, oh, well, I want to do a DNA test. So she bought a DNA test. And <laughs> but like I said, that's just something optional. So I have a basic question. Uh... Research is, is fun compared to this book business. Uh, and in downloading uh, Family Tree Maker and uh, the bookmaker, it says, I haven't done it yet, but it says save your ancestry files or you could lose them. Uh, can you tell me where the heck I go to save my ancestry files so I don't lose them? Well, that's where within Family Tree Maker you can download your ancestry tree. So that that's so there's no worry about losing them then. Does yeah, it, I mean it's it? like yeah, I mean it's like if you're uh, um, um, I'm just closing some things down here. Um, I'm just starting up my Family Tree Maker here. Because, um, you know, if, if you ever don't have internet, you know, you can still look at your tree and whatnot. So, um, Um, okay, I'm sharing. So, um, yeah, because here it's like I got Family Tree Maker. So, yeah, you just say download a tree from Ancestry. And what's going on here? Um, da, da, da. Stop sharing for a sec. Okay, let me go back to sharing my screen.
Yeah, because you just go download a tree from Ancestry, you pick your tree, and then, you know, you download it. So, and then that will download all the medias as well. So, okay. um, and then once you do have it download, then it will actually become linked. So like this is my main tree. And then, uh, so if you're making changes in Ancestry, you can just sync it down. This icon right up here, you know, the icon states, okay, the trees are in sync. Mm -hmm. But if there's stuff, new data in Ancestry, there'll be a highlighted down arrow, which means, okay, Ancestry's got some stuff that your family tree maker doesn't. Or if you've changed some stuff in family tree maker, there'll be an up arrow, which means, okay, there's changes that Ancestry doesn't have. Okay. You can just think and then it will keep them as identical as possible. Because there are some things that don't sync. Uh, so you should never ever treat it as a true backup. Mm -hmm. uh, though there's more ancestries, most of the ancestry stuff will download that uh, Then the other way around, because uh, and McKee McKeev actually has a fact on that as to what does and doesn't sync. So, uh, but so any other questions? Well, if not, we, I'll uh, sign off. If you got any questions, feel free to ask in the group. Um, I just want to thank you very much, John. It's great information. Um, I've done three books using your advice, ascendant, descendant books. One's 600 pages and the other one's about 300. Yeah. All yeah. Very helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So. Okay, well, yeah, like I said, asking questions in the group if you want, and this uh, will be up on YouTube later on today. And I'll post the link on the event, uh, and then also in that group chat. And so um, enjoy. And like I said, uh, yeah, you can watch this anytime. So talk to you later, everyone. Have a good weekend. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.